If you clicked on this video, you've just been fired. You're probably asking yourself, now what? Well, I've got the answers for you that no one else is willing to talk about. So stay tuned for that. Let's face it, getting fired sucks. And it's probably not a decision that you made out of your own accord. You're probably going through a gambit of emotions right now. Anger, sadness, disappointment, bitterness, just to name a few. Worst of all, you were probably caught off guard. Even if you knew that it was coming, it's never fun to be a victim of layoffs. I personally have been through this not once, but twice last year. And I feel like I can speak to it with firsthand experience. You know, I work in tech and honestly, our industry has been destroyed by layoffs in the last two years. It's estimated that more than 200,000 workers have been laid off in the last two years within tech. And we're just talking about the big companies, you know, like the Amazons of the world, Microsoft, Tesla, Google. We're not even accounting for the small companies like the startups. They count too. I can imagine a little mini me in the corner of my mind being like, Hey, we're here. We count too. Please save us. Anyways, besides the emotional roller coaster that you're obviously going through right now, you're likely trying to plan your next steps. And for most of us, the probability of being financially stable enough to have an indefinite amount of vacation is pretty unlikely. So what's the natural next step to look for a job? Here's what they don't tell you about the job market. It is rough out there. You get roughly on average a 3% reply rate when you're applying for jobs. So if you send out a hundred resumes, you get three responses back for interviews. And then after that, you have to go through the gauntlet of interviews just to get considered for an offer and get that role. You lead up to the final interview where it's basically a rose ceremony and it's a flip of a coin between you and the other person. Whoever's lucky enough to be on the heads of the tail side, I guess, wins. I remember vividly last year, there was a company that approached me on LinkedIn and there was eight rounds of interviews. I made it to round six and round six, let me tell you, was the last boss. I remember this so distinctly. Within the first five minutes of the interview, I already knew that I didn't get the job. The vibe was off, the tone was off, her body language wasn't there. She was just asking me questions that she literally probably just compiled off of a Google sheet from HR like five minutes ago. It was just so dismissive and I just went through the motions for 45 minutes, um, but I knew, you know, I, I, was, I was pretty damn sure that, you know, I didn't get the job. So of course, you know, within a couple of days, I got the rejection notice. And frankly, I was still really devastated even though I was expecting it to happen. When you go through that many rounds of interviews, it is, it, it is <laughs> labor intensive. You know, I immediately got on a Zoom call with one of my friends to tell her about the situation and I'll never forget what she said to me. It was one of the best pieces of advice that I have ever received. So she says to me, Jeff, isn't it funny that we put so much of our weight on a stranger's valuation of us? I paused for a second. I had to compute everything that she was saying in my brain. It was like I was Neo seeing the Matrix for the first time. I, I discovered the fourth wall. It was like a coming to Jesus moment. I knew right there and then she was right. Why do we put so much stock in someone's evaluation of us when they don't even know us. Let's run through the list of things that they know about us. This person has likely never met us before prior to this interview. This person has only interviewed us for probably a pretty short amount of time, maybe a 30 minute interview, maybe a 15 minute screen. They have no association with us unless we were referred by someone else within the organization. And number four, the only thing that they know about us is from a piece of paper that they probably downloaded two to five minutes ago and I'm determining my mood based on this perception of myself? Hell no. That's giving this person way, way, way too much power. Look, I'm not naive. Employers need some way to evaluate potential candidates that are stepping into the role. And the truth of the matter is, there could be a million reasons why a company didn't hire you, and none of them are personal. How can they be? They literally just met you. We just can't take this stuff personally. 
If you're gonna take away anything from this video, it's two things. Number one, things happen for a reason. Number two, our value is derived from ourselves and the people that we surround ourselves with. If we're lucky in life, we love those people and those people love us back. That's it. Never get too high and never get too low on your journey for employment. It'll serve you better in the end. Thanks so much for watching everyone. If you like this video, please like, comment, subscribe if you haven't done so already. I really want to hear your comments in this video on what your experience has been like getting laid off. How did you get back on the horse to go chase another job? Or did you pivot and go to a different industry, pursue your dreams, start a business? I want to hear all about that stuff. And secondly, really appreciate it if you subscribe and tell your friends about this channel. I really want to change the world one step at a time. I can't really do that without you all. So I really appreciate it if you spread the love. I'm truly, truly grateful for that. If you enjoyed this content, please stay tuned for next week. I always try to release one video a week. Thank you so much again for watching. TRGO, peace.